This lesson will teach operating principles and terminology associated with displacer type electronic level transmitters. An electronic level transmitter is a device that converts a liquid level into a proportional direct current signal. A 0 to 100 percent level may be converted to a 4 to 20 milliamp signal or a 10 to 50 milliamp signal. Before we explain the operating principles of the electronic level transmitter, let's review the operating principles of a typical pneumatic level transmitter. As you probably recall, the elements of a pneumatic level transmitter include the measurement section, and the transmission section. The measurement section consists of the displacer, driver bearing, and torque tube. As the liquid level rises and falls, the displacer rises and falls a slight amount. When the displacer rises and falls, the torque tube and rotary shaft twist. In a pneumatic type level transmitter, the rotary motion derived from a level change is sensed by a flapper nozzle mechanism. The transmission section converts the rotary shaft movement to a 3 to 15 psi signal. The electronic level transmitter detects the rotary motion derived from a level change by use of capacitor plates or inductors or transformer coupling. The transmission section of the electronic level transmitter converts rotary shaft movement into a current output. This drawing schematically illustrates the capacitance type of rotary shaft position detector. A series LC circuit composed of a fixed inductance and a variable capacitor is electrically connected to the output of an oscillator. In this example, the movable plate moves when the torque tube moves. Assume the circuit is at resonance. Will the oscillator current increase or decrease? if the rotary shaft twists clockwise. The movable plate raises. Therefore, the capacitance decreases. Decreased capacitance increases impedance so the oscillator draws less current. The oscillator output goes through a 2.2 megohm resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor plates. When the oscillator current decreases, the voltage drop across the resistor decreases, allowing a higher voltage to be across the inductor and capacitor. The increased voltage results in an increase in amplifier output current. The DC output current goes through a force motor and the load. The load includes the various loop items. The output current returns to the power supply. The output current passes through the force motor. The force motor coil is actually an electromagnet. Notice that the electromagnet and permanent magnet oppose each other. Increased current in the force motor causes the right end of the beam to rise and the left end to lower. The force motor supplies negative feedback. This negative feedback action restores the movable capacitor plate to a position that doesn't detune the oscillator circuit.
The variable capacitor can be compared to a flapper nozzle. The flapper nozzle must be restored to throttling position. The variable capacitor must also be restored to a position that doesn't detune the oscillator circuit. A zero adjustment can be effected by using a zero spring and zero screw. By increasing or decreasing the spring tension, the output can be synchronized with the true level. The zero spring is opposed by a bias spring. The purpose of the bias spring is to pull the right end of the beam down when the force motor repulsion decreases. Proportional band or specific gravity adjustments can be affected by raising or lowering the permanent magnet portion of the force motor. This action makes the force motor stronger or weaker. If the permanent magnet is relatively close to the electromagnet, negative feedback action is maximum. So the proportional band would be wide, or the specific gravity would be at a high number. When the permanent magnet is close to the electromagnet, a small amount of current will produce the necessary force needed to rebalance the capacitor plates. When the permanent magnet is farther away from the electromagnet, the force motor is weaker, so it takes more current to produce the necessary rebalancing force. When the permanent magnet is screwed away from the electromagnet, the proportional band is narrow because negative feedback action is minimum. For a given movement of the capacitor plates, it would take a great amount of current to produce the necessary negative feedback. Here is our completed schematic. Study the components and adjustments for a moment. This transmission section closely resembles our schematic. This is the rotary shaft. Here is the movable capacitor plate. This printed circuit card contains the oscillator, rectifier, and amplifier. The output current from the printed circuit card goes through the force motor coil. This is the zero setting. And this is the span adjustment. Now work exercise one in your workbook. Now we will study the operation of a specific level transmitter, the Fisher 2340. The Fisher 2340 uses variable transformer couplings to detect rotary shaft position. The variable transformer, called a metrocyte, is located here. The metrocyte vane is connected to the rotary shaft. As the rotary shaft twists, the vane position changes. The total vane movement for a full-scale displacer movement is slight, only 4.4 degrees of rotation. This schematic shows the metrocyte and the vane. The metrocyte has a primary winding that is excited by an oscillator. Assume the metrocyte rises, the transformer coupling between the primary and the upper secondary winding increases, so the output voltage of the upper winding increases. The transformer coupling between the primary metrocyte winding and the lower secondary winding decreases, so the output voltage of the lower winding decreases. 
If the matricide vane lowered due to a level change, the output of the upper coil would decrease and the output of the lower coil would increase. This is the voltage across the matricide primary coil. This dual trace scope is showing the secondaries of the matricite. The upper trace is the upper winding voltage. The lower trace is the lower winding voltage. Now the matricite vane is at the 100% level position. Notice the difference in voltages. Now the matricite is at 0%. Notice the voltage levels are opposite. The two output voltages from the matricite secondaries go to two demodulators. The two demodulators rectify and combine the matricite outputs. The demodulators also add a zero voltage to the combined matricite outputs. The output of the demodulator is the rectified combined matricite output plus the zero voltage component. The DC voltage output of the demodulators goes through a filter to dampen the effects of process turbulence. The filtered demodulator output then goes to the DC amplifier. The DC amplifier consists of U1, a differential amplifier, Q1 and Q2, which are current controlling transistors, and the span adjustment. The regulator supplies and maintains the constant operating voltage required for the various circuits in the transmitter. For this transmitter, the regulator maintains 10.8 and 6.4 volt supply voltages. This is a simplified schematic of the transmitter. U1, the differential amplifier, biases Q1 and Q2 to control the amount of current through the transmitter. The transmitter output current passes through Q1 and Q2. The span potentiometer adjusts the amount of feedback that goes to the differential amplifier. Varying the feedback varies the gain of U1 amplifier and ultimately the gain of the transmitter. Span changes are necessary so the transmitter can measure different specific gravity fluids. Now we will look at the simplified diagram and then make voltage measurements to further understand the operation of the device. For instance, here is where we would measure the oscillator output voltage. Here you see the waveform. To measure the metrocyte's secondary voltages, attach inputs here. Attach a DVM from the demodulator output to ground to observe its operation. This is the demodulator output with 0% level. This is the demodulator output with 100% level. Connect the DVM from the output of U1, the differential amplifier, to ground to observe its operation. This is the differential amplifier output with 0% level. And this is the differential amplifier output with 100% level. Observe the operation of the current controlling transistors Q1 and Q2 by connecting a 4 to 20 or 10 to 50 milliamp current meter in series with the transmitter. Vary the level input. 
the output current should vary through its range. As stated previously, the regulator furnishes power to all the transistor circuits. To observe the operation of the regulator, attach a meter between the regulator output and ground. Now work exercise two in your workbook.